Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Do want to go ahead and talk about a topic that we talked about last week, but give it kind of an update and a new twist because there was a big update over the weekend, but there was also some stuff that you may have missed. And we're of course talking about Michigan football. So if you listen to, I guess it was probably last Wednesday or so's Aaron Torres pod, there was a report from the Michigan on three website that a notice of allegations was coming from the NCAA in regards to the situation with Michigan football and Connor Stallions. Connor Stallions, of course, was allegedly, uh, reportedly traveling or sending friends to other uh, stadiums to record the sidelines. That was against the rules. You couldn't have staff off campus record, you know, going to other games and scouting teams in person. And so we saw last week that the NCAA was set to give out their notice of allegations which is essentially the document that basically says, hey, we've investigated you. This is what we find you guilty of. You have 90 days to respond. So I bring it up because that was the report, at least until Sunday when we got a big new twist and ESPN dropped what many seem to think was a bombshell report as kind of a follow-up to the Michigan story. Among the things in that ESPN report was that Sharon Moore had direct conversation with Connor Stallions, that he deleted 52 text messages from Connor Stallions. Now it's worth noting, worth noting that Sharon Moore later acknowledged that he deleted them and presented the text, you know, to the NCAA. And in that report, ESPN kind of insinuated that uh, there could be a show cause coming for Sharon Moore, that he could miss games. Who knows that he could potentially, obviously if a show cause means you get fired, right? So could Sharon Moore be the fall guy? Is Michigan going to miss multiple years of postseason football? So it felt like a bombshell, but if you looked closer, something much more interesting happened. And if you look closer and if you listen today, I, I think people are kind of missing some things on this story. Okay. So first of all, let me, let me, let me just couple like, like straight fact things. One, first of all, let's put aside any idea of Sharon Moore missing any time this year. Okay. Cause I, I saw all sorts of stuff on social media. Well, Sharon Moore, you know, Jim Harbaugh was suspended last year. Is Sharon Moore going to get suspended this year? It's like, that's not how this process works. Okay. The NCAA, um, when, when they deliver the notice of allegations, which as I'm recording, they have not even delivered it to Michigan yet. Now they may, but they have not yet. Once the NCAA delivers the notice of allegations to Michigan, Michigan doesn't have to respond for 90 days. So even if Sharon Moore is found guilty of, you know, sitting in the first row of, of the horseshoe or of Beaver Stadium with binoculars and a notepad, even if they caught him on camera, which obviously they couldn't because he's probably at the stadium actually coaching games. Michigan doesn't even have to respond until after the season. So nothing's going to happen this year unless Michigan decides to do something themselves, which after they, after they suspended Harbaugh for three games to start last year for a separate incident, I can't see them doing. So Sharon Moore's coaching 12, 13, 14 games this year, 15, 16, however many Michigan plays in this new playoff era. But beyond, and by the way, beyond that, let me say this. I don't think it's 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 great. I don't think it's a great look that Sharon Moore was caught deleting text messages, but I will acknowledge. Remember, the NCAA historically has not punished people who are forthright and honest as much as they have people that have lied. Who are the guys that got fired? Jim Trestle got fired for lying about tattoos. Bruce Pearl got fired for lying about a barbecue. The cover-up is always worse than the crime. But to me, I think we're missing something bigger because I read that report on Sunday when it came out. Then I reread it on Monday and something very interesting caught my eye in the opening paragraph. Producer Matt, do we have the, the screenshot of the opening paragraph of the, the, the ESPN report? 
Here is what it says. This is how the report starts. This is, you can find this on ESPN.com, Google, wherever. Listen to this. New Michigan head coach, Sharon Moore, is one of seven members from the 2023 football program accused of violating NCAA rules in a draft of the notice of allegations obtained by ESPN. It is worth noting. It also adds the draft, which could be subject to change states, uh, Sharon Moore, blah, 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 whatever. But listen to that opening paragraph in a draft of the, of the NCAA's notice of allegations that Michigan obtained. And so when I sit here and I sit here and look at this case, how this is the part that, that blows my mind that nobody else has picked up on. How the heck in a couple weeks is Michigan or in a couple months is the NCA going to be able to claim that they are completely unbiasedly covering Michigan and being fair and being whatever when it is so obvious that they are leaking information to media outlets which they are then reporting on i think this is a terrible look for for the NCAA and i'll be transparent i think it's a terrible look for ESPN too and let me explain now before we get into it I should do the full transparency thing, right? I do host Fox Sports Radio. Fox Sports Radio has nothing to do with FS1, nothing to do with the Big Ten. To be clear, it doesn't benefit me at all if Michigan is good or Michigan is bad. It doesn't benefit me at all if Mich- you know, to defend Michigan. So let's get that out of the way, and let's just look at the facts of the case. Because one thing I will say, if you have followed this story from the beginning, Michigan fans have been adamant that the NCA is out to get the Michigan football program. And I think it's becoming increasingly clear that they may be onto something because just think about it, go back to last year. And we talked about it last year. We talked about it last week, actually, is that if you go back to last year, the Connor stallion stories, the Connor stallion story breaks right before Michigan goes on their buy. I think it was, they played Michigan state maybe. And then they, or maybe they played Michigan state after the buy. I can't remember. They play a game, and then they're on a bye, and nobody's doing any media. Jim Harbaugh's on the road recruiting, okay? And so I bring it up because do you remember what happened from there? Every single day, it felt like there was a new report out basically burying Michigan more and more. First, it was that they were sending, uh, uh, you know, uh, coaches to steal signs. Then it was, you know, 15 Big Ten games, whatever. Then it was they were sending them for out-of-conference games and teams they could face in the playoff. And it just kept going on and on and on and on and on. And incredibly, every single article seemed to come from ESPN. What a weird coincidence. And so Michigan fans have been on this from day one. I don't necessarily think that they're wrong. And it's just jarring to me the idea that nobody else sees this or nobody else is at least questioning to this. How did ESPN get the document from the NCAA unless, of course, the NCAA wants it out? Now, why do they want it out? I don't know. But what I do know is, listen, you go back to last year. It is clear they had it out for Harbaugh. Why? Probably because Harbaugh won't play nice. Harbaugh wouldn't play along. Harbaugh wouldn't play by the rules. Harbaugh wouldn't acknowledge that he did anything wrong when he didn't. By the way, let me find the quote really quick because apparently Jim Harbaugh even spoke about this today where uh, he said, let me see if I can find this quote. Uh, Let's see. He said, I do have a comment on that. Never lie, never cheat, never steal. I was raised with that lesson. I have raised my family on that lesson. I have preached that lesson to the teams I have coached. No one's perfect. If you stumble, you apologize and you make it right. Today, I do not apologize. I did not participate, was not aware, nor complicit in those said allegations. So for me, it's back to work and attacking with an an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. And so if you think about why would the NCAA be out to get Michigan? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's because Jim Harbaugh refused to play by their rules. He was a guy that criticized the NCAA at every stop. He was the one talking about athletes getting paid and revenue sharing years before anybody else did. And then, oh, by the way, when the Big Ten tried to bury Michigan last year, remember, suspending Jim Harbaugh for three games right before the three biggest games of the year with no 
actual investigation, Michigan won anyway. And so to me, this all feels so obvious. The NCAA is mad that they couldn't nail Harbaugh. The NCAA is mad, by the way, that Harbaugh didn't play by the rules. They're mad that the Big Ten took it upon themselves to suspend Harbaugh and Michigan still won the natty last year. And I think from ESPN's perspective, there's no reason for them. You know, Michigan's not part of the Big Ten family or or Michigan's not part of the ESPN family. Excuse me. Remember, ESPN doesn't broadcast the Big Ten. There's no incentive for them to play nice. I find it all very interesting. Now, the one good thing I will say, if you are uh, a Michigan fan, is it was actually, let me make sure that I have this correctly, uh, because the the report itself that came out um, on Sunday, let me see if I can find this really quick. Give me half a second here, because I think there's something interesting that also popped up that producer Matt sent to me throughout the day. But so that report that came out on Saturday or on Sunday, excuse me, um, you know, it sounded like it was really, really, really going to be bad. But as I said, listen, what I said is true. First of all, Sharon Moore is not getting suspended for any games this year unless Michigan decides to do it themselves. Two, and this is stuff we talked about last week, the NCAA has said they are out of the postseason ban business, the scholarship reduction business, because essentially they don't want to punish players for stuff that happened when they were not on campus. So in other words, if you if you keep Michigan out of the postseason, you're punishing dudes in 2026 or 2027 that weren't even on the roster when this happened. Well, I found it interesting that within hours of each other, both Pete Thamel and Paul Feinbaum each individually said that they did not believe that the NCAA was going to punish Michigan maybe as much as people thought. Here is what uh, here is what Pete Thamel said earlier in the day. He said, I would think Sharon Moore faces a short suspension. If you look at the history of this stuff, at the maximum to go through this sort of matrix of what could happen to Michigan, I don't think they're going to have any type of postseason ban. I don't think looking at history and looking at past precedent, there's going to be any type of retroactive anything to what they've already won and accomplished. Their accomplishments are safe. There's no player eligibility at stake in this. So for Moore, who's sort of become the face of this notice because the other coaches are in the NFL, I would think they would find out in the upcoming weeks and months, depending on how long it takes to litigate, if he does get end up getting some sort of suspension. So Pete Thamel confirmed, sure, Moore might get a suspension, but they're not going to suspend Michigan from the postseason. They're not going to take away scholarships. That's not what the NCAA is in the business of doing anymore. I also found it interesting, Paul Feinbaum, who's been a thorn in the side of the Big Ten for years, had this to say. He said, this is all a long, drawn-out story that in most people's eyes, probably other than the NCAA, is over. This is interesting that Paul Feynman said. He said, let's not forget that Charlie Baker, the president of the NCAA, after Michigan won the national championship, he said they won fair and square. I remember that, and I think a lot of lawyers are going to remember that too if this case goes far and puts Michigan in the crosshairs. So Paul Feinbaum says that the president of the NCAA actually acknowledged that Michigan was punished in real time by the Big Ten, which I continue to say, this is double jeopardy. Michigan's already been punished. Harbaugh was suspended for Penn State, Ohio State, and and Maryland last year. You can't punish them again. So good news, bad news if you're a Michigan fan. It feels like ESPN is out to get you with the NCAA. The good news is, I think ESPN even acknowledges the people that actually know this sport. I don't think this is going to be nearly as salacious as maybe Sunday's report said. Interesting stuff at Michigan. Interesting stuff indeed.